Continuing on with orbital diagrams and spectroscopic notation, if we're asked to draw the orbital diagram for lithium, first thing we want to do is find lithium on the periodic table. So here's lithium. Notice it's found in the S block. It's not in the first row of the S block, it's in the second row. And we know that the S block starts at quantum number n is equal to 1. Lithium is down one row, so we're going to increase the n value by 1. So instead of n is equal to 1, now we're going to end up at n is equal to 2. But the first two electrons, just like we did for hydrogen and then for helium, are going to be exactly the same. So we know we have the 1s subshell, the first electron and the second electron. This would be helium. So we're going to draw a new subshell, which the periodic table tells us is going to be the 2s subshell. And s subshells always have one orbital. So I'm going to draw one orbital in that 2s subshell. And I need to put in a total of three electrons. We know where the first two went. They match helium. And then the third one has to go in, spin pointing up into the 2s orbital which is found in the 2s subshell. Spectroscopic notation would be 1s subshell has two electrons in it, and then we have the 2s subshell with one electron in it. Continuing on, beryllium right next to lithium has four electrons so we know the 1s is full the 2s has one electron in there for lithium there's space available for a second electron that's going to go in spin pointing down so spectroscopic notation would be 1s2 2s2 then we get to boron five electrons and again, check on the periodic table, and we'll find boron is right here. So boron is the first element where we're in the P block. And P's do not start at number 1. We know P's start at number 2. S's start at 1's, P's start at 2, D's start at 3, F's start at 4. So the first four electrons are identical to beryllium's, but now the fifth one is going to go into the 2p subshell. And unlike s subshells, p subshells do not have just one orbital, instead they have three orbitals. So I'm going to draw three separate boxes. We're going to fill these in from left to right, and we only need to put in one more electron. So that electron would go into the first orbital found in the 2p, and because it's the first electron in, it would go in spin pointing up. Spectroscopic notation would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Carbon, right next to that, has six electrons. So again, everything builds on the, on the atoms that came before it, so everything will be identical for the first five electrons. Now we have the first choice where we have to apply Hund's rule, because we have two possibilities. We can either put in the sixth electron, pair it up with the first electron in that 2p subshell, but remember Hund's rule says if you have a choice, and this is the first time when we have a choice, the electron prefers to be in its own orbital. And again, it's the first one in, so it's going to be spin pointing up. This is spectroscopic notation, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Notice there's much more information in the orbital diagram, and there's less information in the spectroscopic notation.
seven electrons for nitrogen. The first six look just like carbons. So number one and number two, number three and number four, number five and number six. Number seven, again we apply Hund's rule and we put that electron in to its own orbital spin pointing up. Eight electrons for oxygen. The 1s is full, 2s is full. Now for the 2p, we've put one electron into all three orbitals. We can't put a fourth orbital because p subshells only have three, so oxygen has no choice. It has to be paired up with the first electron and it has to go in spin pointing down. Spectroscopic notation would just be 1s2, 2s2, 2p has a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons. So instead of doing every single element on the periodic table, we can jump ahead a little bit. We could look, for example, at neon. And if you always go to the periodic table, neon is the very last element in this first row of the P block. So this is going to be the full, the 2P subshell will be absolutely full once we put in all 10 electrons for neon. Remember, the location on the periodic table tells you where the last electron is going to end up. And neon is found in that 2p subshell, so we know the electron, the last electron, the tenth electron, will have to go into a 2p subshell. So we have the 1s, 2s, and then 2p, number 1 and number 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, and 7, I'll follow Hun's rule, number 8, number 9, and then number 10. So all of the subshells are completely full when we get to neon, which we knew that by looking at the periodic table, neon was at the far right, the very last element in that 2p subshell. If we look at potassium, on the periodic table, potassium is right here. So again, we're in the S block and we're in number one, two, three, four, if we count down. So potassium's 19th electron will end up in a 4S subshell. So we know the 1s is first, then the 2s, and then the 2p. So just like we did for neon, we can put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. What comes after the 2p? So after the 2p, neon, number 10, we go to number 11, sodium. Now we're back in the S block, and it's number 1, 2, 3S. So after 2P must come 3S. That's the name of the subshell. How many orbitals do we draw for any S subshell? And the answer is always one orbital. So we're going to fit a maximum of two electrons in there. So that's... 12 out of our 19 electrons we need to get to potassium. So what comes after the 3s? And again we go to the periodic table. After the 3s, that, that would be magnesium, 12th electron. 13th is aluminum. Now we're back in the p block. It's no longer 2p because we dropped down a row. Now we're in 3p. And we're going to fill that up with 3p and then we're going to end up at the 4s 
to get to potassium's 19th electron. So after 3s comes 3p. p subshells always have three orbitals. And we put in number one, number two, number three, according to Hund's rule, and then four, five, and six. So right now, I've drawn in 18 out of the 19 electrons. The 19th electron must go into a 4s subshell, which has just one orbital, and that will go in spin pointing up. So the nice thing about orbital diagrams is if you count your arrows, you know how many electrons you should never have a different number of electrons than you got off the periodic table for neutral atoms.